Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today you're going to be talking about Gherkin, right? Last video we talked about uh, how we can write the scenarios uh, using specification by example, meaning that uh, you're going to specify what the system does and not how it does it. So for you to to keep it up and it's important for you to keep it up and watch the previous videos i'm going to be posting the links and also please subscribe mark the bell so you can receive the notifications for my videos so before we, we dive into qcon in gherkin itself let's talk about a little bit uh, uh, of uh, what as like described so you're going to notice that there are three square three circles here automated test executable specification and live documentation Cucumber is right in the middle, in the intersection between those three. And that's based on everything that we, we talked about on, on Cucumber already, right? Because you're going to, it's going to be uh, executing your specification. It's going to, because it's being executed, it's going to be become a live documentation. It's always running, so it's going to force the team to update it. And it has, you can write your automation uh, in your step definition in whatever language you, ch you choose. And then you have this perfect, uh, let's say, documentation scenario where you're going to be forced to maintain it, you're going to have a nice report, and you're going to have a, your, a, your scenarios being ran automated. Of course, uh, in order for you to take the most out of this, Cucumber needs to be in, in this intersection. It cannot be only here, or it cannot be only here, or it cannot be only here. It needs to be exactly here in order for you to take the most out of it. But again, it's something that you and your team needs to choose. In the previous videos, I talked about uh, different cases that I, different real cases that I went uh, in, in, my, in my past projects, and if it was worth it or not. And not all of them, we had these, uh, the perfect usage of Cucumber related to the three amigos. And uh, I urge you to go through that video to understand what I'm talking about. Great, so Gherkin, right? Gherkin is a natural language with some features, right? And every Cucumber, oh, sorry, every BDD implementation uses Gherkin. Um, it's a, te a technical and non-technical people can understand and write the scenarios and it allows tests to be performed, thus becoming a live documentation. Right. And in Gherkin, you need to have keywords, right? So it, it, it identifies your scenarios based on keywords and you can find the refer reference down here. But those are all the keywords necessary for you to, to understand uh, or not, to create your scenario uh, scenarios. And I'm going to go over all of these uh, keywords so the first thing first thing is our feature right so when you are creating a scenario you're going to have a feature file right dot feature is a file called something dot feature and it specifies a feature that you are specifying and the name of the feature uh, in the beginning of the feature you're going to have the name of that feature and here it's the name of the functionality that you're testing something that you are you are you are doing or some something that you are testing there maybe the login maybe user access something like this All right so the test uh the test scenarios are grouped by functionality right and each dot feature file must map to a feature that's basically what i said and in a broader scenario you're going to have this kind of thing you're going to have the feature and the feature name you're going to have the scenario and the title of the scenario and the title specifies identifies the test meaning that you cannot have two scenarios with the same name you have a given which set up the test uh, given i have a given i have a product to sell and you have an when which is the action or interaction when i look for that product then you're going to see a result then i should see that product on the result page and you have an end and a but right an end and a but 
it's it's a continued step for any of the previous one so you can have a nice way of talking about it like if you say it out loud it makes sense to say given i have set up one and i have set up two when i do this action and i do this other action then i should see result one and i should see result two of course you don't need to use and and but you can say given i have set up one given i have set up two when i do action one when i do action two but it's going to work perfectly fine but uh, for reading purposes and, and better interpretation of the scenarios the end and the but really works there right great but what if i have what, what what happens if i have to filter a lot of things like if i have like uh in the previous example in the in the previous video i talked about um filtering a result on amazon how that look like right when i search uh by smartphone and filter the result by android operating system and filter the result by samsung brand and filter the result by six inch screen size and filter the result by 128 gigs of disk, disk space then only pro pro products that meet the filters are shown so it's it's a lot of steps to do one simple thing right and that's where uh, the Gherkin helps you out with some functionality, right? And then I can create a table, like a list table. When I search, I forgot the I, when I search by smartphone and filter by Android Samsung 6, 128 gig, then only products that meet the filters are shown. And this is going to be, excuse me, a nice readable scenario. But then how that looks like in this code side, because this is on the scenario side, it's pretty readable. But then what happens when I go to the code, right? When I go to the code, what happens is this is, this is going to become an array, right? This is going to become an array. And it's going to be in, in a, an array of of the same order as is, is in the table. Android, the first one, the first index, Samsung 6, 128. And you're going to access that array as a regular array in any language that you are using. You can loop through that too, right? So that's that's the first use case uh, is when you, you have a list table, right? But also, you can also have a dictionary, right? So the table, you're going to have to know the order, right? In this case, you're going to have to know the order of the elements in your code. So you can choose, yeah, you can filter out by the correct element. You cannot filter out uh, operating system using 128 gigs. It's not going to work. So we can have dictionaries, right? So in, in this case, we have a table with two columns on the left. You had you have the key of your map and on the right you have the value of your map and this can be as long as you want but by in mind the bigger the table is harder it's going to be to understand so in the same the scenario is the same but then how that's going to look in the code right, this is going to be mapped to a dictionary or a hash map depending on the language that you use java java called this hash map Python and Ruby calls this dictionary. Uh, PHP calls uh, associ associ associative array. Right? So it's going to be mapped the key. So we're going to have the key here and the value on the other side. So now you don't have to know the order. You just say, I want a dic I want the brand from the dictionary. Or if you're writing in Java, you're going to do this. I want to have the brand so this makes a little bit easier for you to use in the code because you don't need to know the order you just need to know uh, the key of what you're looking for and it's much much easier to figure out the key great I can also have if I have multiple things that I'm doing it uh, multiple multiple filter that I'm doing for different products 
I can have a list of dictionary. The scenario is the same, but now the table changed a little. In this table here, the previous one, we have the key here on the left side. Now the key is on the header, right? So we're going to have a key, and then you're going to have two items in this list. So it's a list of dictionary, right? And the key is how you're going to find it, find the specific value. But then for you to go through the whole lines here, you need to, to loop through those values, right? So how that's going to look like? You're going to have a dictionary, an, an array of dictionaries, which in the first position, you're going to have the first line and, and it's a map. And the second position, you're going to have the second line, the second, this, the second position you're going to have the second line, which is also a map. So you're going, to, you're going to be able to find through the keys, but for you to access everything, you're going to have to loop through the whole array. Great. All right. But that how, I'm going to show how, how we can differentiate, how we, you're going to use a a list or how you're going to use a, a filter or whatever you need to do, right? Great. Oh, too much. So we also have backgrounds. The syntax, sorry for the typo, the syntax in, in the background is you're going to have a background which is mainly used to uh, mainly used to set up something right and sorry i i'm getting confused with english and portuguese so here it says uh register a smartphone so given that i have a android smartphone and that i have an iphone smartphone right so the the importance of the background is that it's going to be executed before every scenario so you're going to have one background in that background and you're going to have 10 scenarios that background is going to be executed 10 times before each scenario so you need to be mindful of how you're going to use it because if you have a background just for two scenarios and you have 10 scenarios that background is going to be executed for the other eight and you don't want that because you are wasting time it's better to have the setup for those two so he reuses the setup as i said ideally no action or verification should be done only configuration and why is that it's because if you have a a a scenario a background that are doing action and verification and let's say you are at the end of the file you are in the middle of the file and you want to understand what that scenario is doing it now you need to go back and forth on the background to understand what that, what that scenario is doing because the background is actually doing some actions. So for you to understand that, you need to go to the top, see the background, and then uh, go to the bottom. You don't need to put the background on the, on the top. It just, I, it's a preference for me since it's a, a setup I rather have on the, on the top. Try not to have complex configurations, just what's necessary for understanding, right? If you put too many complex things, then again, your readability is going to be poor. And the, when you are doing um, BDD, it's all about readability and you don't want to lose that readability because if you lose that readability, then you should have been doing that in the code itself because it would be easier to implement the code itself without using cucumber or use without, without using bd right? the code itself would be easier to implement if not using cucumber and it runs before each scenario as i said so be mindful another way that you can also leverage some of uh, duplication is using scenario outline so the scenario outline uses the same scenario but with different data right you're going to have let's say you the scenario about filtering you want to have 
uh, that scenario executed more than one time uh, filtering by different products right so we don't have to write multiple scenarios that does the same thing you just need to have one scenario and each row in the example table represents a complete scenario and I'm going to go over this what what I'm mean by that so this is a scenario outline we have our scenario search by products using filter when search for smartphone and I filter by and then I have a table which is a dictionary table where the keys are on the left and on the right are the values but notice something I don't have the actual values here what I have is I have a variable between uh, greater than and lesser than signs the same here in the result and this when I did the, when I do that it becomes variables the values of the variables are on my examples so I can have as many examples as I want and here is the actual value right so I have a table and I, I have my my variables here and then I have the values of those values here and in this case I use two tables because one are my valid scenarios my happy path and the other one are my unhappy path the one that's going to fail right so this is what I mentioned <laughs> that each row in the example table represents a complete scenario because this one is going to run four times one two three and four so the first time it's going to run is going to execute this line is going to get this table and it's going to look for the brand value and it's going to find the brand value here and it's going to use Samsung the same thing is going to use the next one is going to be used Android and then the screen is going to use the data for this line here the second time you run so we finish the scenario great it's going to run again because there is another line and now it's going to run again using this line here and then it's going to run one a third time using this line and a fourth time using this line so this same scenario is going to be executed four times right and how can I access this in, in, in my code I can ignore that it's going to be executing four times because for cucumber is like I created four different scenarios I, I'm going to access the same way as I did using the dictionary hash map because this is how it's going to be sent to the code this table is just to send the data itself this one is how it's going to be sent to my Java code so Cucumber is going to re-execute those multiple times so my code does not have to care about that it just need to get this table here and it's fine right so how should I use scenario outline or table right I could have put here the background but I already described this background the background is going to be uh, you're going to use whenever you have a setup that's going to be shared across your scenarios there are other ways that you can share something in Cucumber but then I'm going to be talking about those in the actual implementation uh, but here if you are describing multiple scenarios you're going to use scenario outline as I just said we have multiple scenarios here using use changing only the data the only thing that changed was the data so if that's the case you use a scenario outline if you are doing a setup or a simplifying or simplifying action use table right so it's going to become a list or an array so if it's if it's just setting up a test you need this kind of data here boom it becomes a list or if you want just to simplify something right so you can send a list as well right so you need when you are writing a scenario you need also to think about the implementation side and the readability side great so this is what I wanted to talk about next video I'm going to start talking about 
how the cucumber project looks like and we shortly going to be starting talking about the implementation so if you haven't subscribed please do so mark the bell so you're going to receive notifications of the next videos if you like it give the thumbs up and thank you for watching this far right. bye